So after uh, Adam Smith came up with the theory of absolute advantage and uh, Ricardo was came uh, came up with comparative theory, uh, it was it was a lot more you know interesting for the world to understand these things that how trade works and a lot of econo economics was built on this. But later on, uh, a paradox was uh, discovered by Leontief. And by a paradox, we do not mean a pure theory, but it is something which you sometimes you see as a bug in the theory. The theory itself stay, uh, stays on. For example, till date, till now, the theory of absolute advantage and comparative advantage, they don't have anything bad in them. They are still there. People talk about them. People try to observe them in the overall international trade. They also prove them, right? There is uh, criticism against both the, both the theories. There is acceptance for both the theories. But, but this was a major paradox which was actually discovered by Leon Triff, who actually theorized that since the, the US was relatively abundant in capital compared to other nations, the US would be an exporter of capital intensive goods and an importer of labor intensive goods. Actually, uh, Hawaii, while uh, Ricardo actually gave the comparative uh, advantage theory, he, he said that a country who should export a resource should be a, complete, a country who has more capital for that. So he said that countries in the world will eventually end up importing from the countries who have more capital. Only those countries who will have more capital will be the exporting countries. So he said that eventually people saw that US has a lot of capital, abundant capital in US, but the US also imports. So this paradox that Ricardo jo hai, he said that countries who have more resources, more capital, they would be the countries that will only export and they won't have to import anything. But eventually, uh, US is a country which actually imports a lot of things. Okay, so uh, it's not with the capital intensiveness that a country can export. It is about the specialization of a particular pro production process for goods or services that a country can export. So this paradox was actually discovered. Uh, there is another theory, which is not a prominent theory and later on it was rejected because of the um, intricacies that it cannot handle for the international trade is a product life cycle theory. And it says that as products mature, because products have their life cycle, for example, initially products are in research and development stage. Later on, they go into introduction stage and growth stage. You have studied all of this in marketing courses. So he said that when pro products actually mature, both the location of the sale and the optimal production location will change effectively the flow and the direction of the trade. That in short terms, in um, you know simple terms, he said that products will be produced somewhere else and they will be sold somewhere else. Okay, that's good enough. But with globalization, it is happening with all the products, even the new products, products who are not even mature enough, they are being uh, transferred to the other countries. For example, people purchase clothing uh, from all over the world. People actually buy clothes, the unstitched clothes from some, some place like Faisalabad. They send it to Vietnam where it is being stitched. And after stitching, they send it to China for packaging. So with globalization, it's not about the final products or the mature products that they can be sold anywhere or they can be sold at, at a different point from where they were produced. It can happen with a lot of products. So the theory was very limited and uh, it was later on rejected because of this bug. Uh, the theory is ethnocentric also. Ethnocentricism means that it is more culturally uh, variated. There's a cultural variation which is explained to the theory. Yes, Bilal, you raised hand. You have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Ji, Bilal, bale. Uh, sir, you said that, for example, you said that for example, you said that in Faisalabad, you go to Vietnam, you stitch in Vietnam, and in China, you packaging. So, we don't get an absolute advantage. I mean, you said that Advantage absolute advantage 
अगर मैं एक कपड़ा बनाने वाला एक प्रोड्यूसर हूँ मैन्युफैक्चरर हूँ जो कि क्लोथिंग प्रोवाइड करता है मार्केट में तो मुझे एक ऐसा प्रोड्यूसर बनना है जो कि कम से कम पैसों में कम से कम रिसोर्स यूज करके जिसे फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कहते हैं लैंड लेबर कैपिटल एंटरप्राइज ये कम से कम रिसोर्स यूज करके मैं उतनी ही अमाउंट ऑफ क्लोथिंग प्रोवाइड करूँ जितनी की दुनिया में कोई प्रोवाइड कर सकता है तो लोग क्यों फैसलाबाद से कपड़ा खरीदते हैं और वियतनाम क्यों बेचते हैं कटिंग और स्टिचिंग के लिए और फिर पैकेजिंग के लिए चाइना क्यों बेचते हैं उसकी एक खास रीजन है बिकॉज ये पर्टिकुलर पोजिशन जो हैं जो लोकेशन हैं दे स्पेशलाइज इन वॉट दे डू फॉर एग्जाम्पल फैसलाबादी पीपल एंड फैसलाबादी इंडस्ट्री दे स्पेशलाइज इन दी वीविंग स्पिनिंग एंड कलरिंग ऑफ द क्लोदिंग दे डो नॉट स्पेशलाइज इन स्टिचिंग तो उसमें कौन स्पेशलाइज करता है उसमें वियतनाम करता है पैकेजिंग में कौन करता है चाइना करता है सो वाई वी आर यूजिंग डिफरेंट लोकेशन बिकॉज दे आर गिविंग द मैक्सिम आउटपुट यूजिंग द मिनिमम इनपुट दे आर द मोस्ट एफिशियंट लोकेशन दैट वाई वी आर यूजिंग इट एंड दिस ऑल हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्लोबलाइजेशन समझ आई Yes, sir, okay. ठीक है तो तीन चीजें इस थ्योरी के बारे में नोट करने वाली हैं एक तो ये कि ये एक एथनोसेंट्रिक थ्योरी एथनोसेंट्रिक का मतलब ये होता है कि जब आप अपने आप को दूसरों से बेहतर समझते हैं दूसरों से बड़ा समझते हैं तो दिस 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 वाज अ थ्योरी व्हिच एक्चुअली हैड दैट काइंड ऑफ बायस इन इट इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ बायसनेस व्हिच एक्चुअली एग्जिस्ट इन दिस थ्योरी एंड द सेकंड पॉइंट इज दैट प्रोडक्शन टुडे इज डिस्पर्स्ड ग्लोबली आज की प्रोडक्शन जो है वो ग्लोबली डिस्पर्स्ड है जैसे मैंने आपको बताया कि मल्टीपल लोकेशंस पे ये सारी चीजें जो है प्रोड्यूस होती हैं आप सिर्फ अपना लैपटॉप अपना मोबाइल फोन जो है उसमें देख लें कौन से कंपोनेंट्स लगे हैं और कहां से कहां से कहां से बने हैं फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू परचेज एन आईफोन एट द बैक ऑफ द आईफोन इट इज रिटन दैट इट वाज डिजाइंड इन अमेरिका यूएस एंड इट वाज असेंबल्ड इन चाइना बट द प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर इंस्टॉल्ड इन द इन दैट पर्टिकुलर आईफोन दे आर फ्रॉम सो मेनी अदर कंट्रीज ठीक है तो प्रोडक्शन जो है वो ग्लोबली डिस्पर्स्ड एंड देन प्रोडक्ट्स टुडे आर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन मल्टीपल मार्केट्स साइमल्टेनियसली so it is not about maturity that a product will get mature in the market only then it can be sold somewhere else now people actually introduce products all over the all over all over the world right away uh nay mobile phones jo hai aap dekhen wo kai mukhtalif markets mein at the same time jo hai wo launch hote hain so isliye product life cycle theory jo hai usko reject kar diya gaya so uh what is the new theory now and what is the uh contemporary trade theory how we treat things these days so aajkal ki jo sabse important understanding hai and i will also talk about another strategy which is not a theory but it has some link with the theory so wo bhi main baat karunga before that jo modern economics and modern international trade theory bolti hai jo ki international management ke hawale se bahut important hai wo hai economies of scale that you have to reduce per unit cost ek unit banane ki kam se kam cost aap leke aaye apne paas economics mein you study a lot of curves you study average total cost you study marginal cost and you see that where the lowest point of marginal cost and the average total cost is that should be the point of production for you so aaj ki door mein businesses they have to work on economies of scale and usually economies of scale jo hai usko you you have to reach that by producing the products in mass scale now uh, i will ask you a question you you guys are students of business you have uh, studied a lot of courses you you going to tell me that in 1960s <coughs> china was not a major economy of the world china was going through a very tough time the communist people were engaging a lot of um, warfare in china but after 1960s now in the past decade china has become one of the most uh, brilliant economies in the world how this happened what happened in the mid- in the past a couple of decades what was so interesting that happened in china and actually changed the whole scenario of chinese economy in the world kyun ji kya samajhte hain aap because they produce everything uh that's not uh, it i guess maybe china might not produce everything maybe they 
you can find some products and services that China does not produce. For example, Google is not produced by China. Microsoft is not produced by China. China cannot produce everything, but there is something else. Sir, because they export all over the world. Well, they export a lot and they export right now, but uh, the point to which I'm, I want to go is that they actually started producing everything on mass scale. Whatever they produce, they produce it on a mass scale. And the reason for that was because number one, China has the biggest, the largest population in the world. So if I have to produce, let me give you an example. If I have to produce one pizza at home, so I, I, and I want to make a good pizza, what will happen? I will have to spend a lot of money and especially I have to purchase an oven that can actually bake the pizza. But if I go to a pizza shop, it's not difficult for them because they have all the ingredients. They have the oven. They can produce 100 pizzas in a day easily. I cannot do that at home. So they have the capacity to produce that particular product in large scale. What if I ask them, I, I need 1000 pizzas per day. They will not be able to provide me, at least not a single shop. They will have to construct a factory. Now, China has factories that can produce millions and millions of products. COVID happened to the world and within days they produced a 1000 bed hospital because they have that kind of inf infrastructure. So they are producing products on economies of scale. Economies of scale means that your unit cost is minimum. Or aapki unit cost kab minimum hoti hai? When your fixed cost is divided on the maximum number of units produced. For that, you have to produce the maximum number of units. Okay, so China actually came to the top of the world's economies by using economies of scale. They produced everything in mass production. Whatever they produced, they engaged in the production of those goods by establishing factories and establishing infrastructure that can produce those goods in mass production. Understood, G? ओके तो इससे रिलेटेड एक पॉइंट है जो कि आप थोड़ा सा रिसर्च करेंगे उस पे आपने मुझे वन पेज एक्टिविटी देनी है कंसीडर इट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर असाइनमेंट वो है ओबोर वन बेल्ट वन रोड दैट चाइना एंगेज्ड इन प्रोड्यूसिंग अ रोड क्योंकि दुनिया में जो ज्यादातर ट्रेड होती है वो थ्रू वाटर होती है सी वाटर्स होती है लोग जो हैं वो बड़े-बड़े कंटेनर्स जो हैं वो शिप्स के ऊपर ला देते हैं और शिप्स जो हैं वो مختلف पोर्ट्स पे जाती हैं और वो एक्सपोर्ट इंपोर्ट होती है China actually came up with a different strategy. One belt, one road. Dunia mein kaisa road banate hain jispe Chinese products can travel. And a part of that is also in Pakistan, which is called CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. To aapne obor, jo ke one belt, one road hai, Microsoft Word pe one page activity karni hai. You have to give me all the information that you can find on a single page about obor, one belt, one road. Okay? You really need to know what China is doing to actually export the products that it produces using economies of scale, having competitive advantage in all those products. So a lot of theories, they get all together in the production of those goods and services that China is producing and exporting to other countries. Got it? Yes, sir. This, was yes, called, sir. this economies of scale was called the new trade theory and this was such a revolutionary idea that it was given a Nobel Prize. So Paul Krugman, who actually came up with this idea, was given a Nobel Prize for this. All right. So uh, these are the few uh, theories. And uh, with that, I think I will end up with the last uh, theory, uh, which is about competitive advantage. And that is not a trade theory, but it helps to uh, help different countries or different organizations to achieve competitive advantage. If you in modern world, if you want to come on the top, if you want Pakistan to become a country who can export a lot of goods and services to other countries, and if you want Pakistan to gain competitive advantage, so you have to understand what Pakistan has to do. Or a particular organization, even if you're working as a manager in a multinational organization, so what that multinational organization has to do to become some uh, firm who has a competitive advantage in something. So Michael Porter, 
who is a very famous scholar in the management and you must have studied Michael Porter's five forces. Uska ek or model hai jo ke utilize hota hai competitive advantage gain karne ke liye. Usse kehte Michael Porter's diamond. So he gave up a theory in the form of a diamond jis mein char uh, cheeze hai jo ke ek multinational company kar sakti hai aur ek country bhi kar sakta hai to gain competitive advantage on the international level. Number one, factor endowments. Number two, demand conditions that you uh, actually pr produce enough demand conditions there that enough demand is gathered to go to up to that level where you can produce things on economies of scale. Then relating and sporting industries and finally firm strategy, structure and rivalry. So this is a diamond. Hai. Uh, individual components in this diamond are as important as the relationship between the other components uh, that exist in this diamond. So, a particular component jo hai, sirf usi pe aapne focus nahi karna, uske relationship mein baaki cheezon ko bhi aapne dekhna. Factor endowment ka kya matlab hai? That, jo factors of production hai, land, labor, capital, enterprise, you should possess them. You should be located in somewhere where the factors are in abundance, especially those factors which are more involved in the production of the product or service that you want to deliver. For example, if you want to produce uh, programmers who can write programs and create games and software that can be exported all over the world, for that you will have to be located somewhere in the Silicon Valley. In California, America, there's a particular place which is called Silicon Valley because a lot of tech people are there who are related to technology. They have a lot of programming skills and a lot of capital over there that can produce a lot of games and software. So, you have to be located where your factors are used in production is more abundance. This is the first point. The second point is that you need to have demand conditions that people over there uh, are a prospective market. Not only to the local area, but particularly to, to the point where you want to export. You should have a link with those demand areas, the demand markets. You can segment them, you can target them, you can position yourself. All those strategies come in play when we talk about demand conditions. And also the barriers that are related to the demand conditions. Sometimes you produce something in a greater way, in a higher quality, but the need in the market is not higher quality. The need in the market is cheaper products. So you have to produce the products in a cheaper way. So you have to see what are the demand conditions and Accordingly, you shape up your strategy, right? And strategy involves the way you structure your organization. We will chapter a whole chapter about how multinational companies ko kis structure karte hai, what are different organizational structures that are used in multinational organizations. Again, how you going to uh, come up with a strategy that can produce a competitive advantage as compared to your rivalry, the competition which exists in the market, because you won't be the only multinational company producing the product. Uh, for example, uh, look at the beverages, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. They might be the only two top, top beverages companies, but again, there are two. There's not a single one. So you will always have some competition. How are you going to beat your competition? What strategy you will have? What differentiation you will have? That needs to be there in place. And finally, what are the sporting industries? As I was talking about beverages, so Coca-Cola not only have to produce the liquid which is filled in the bottle, but also the glass bottles, plastic bottles. They also need trucks through which they can actually distribute the products. They need good roads on which the trucks can go on. And if you're working in Europe, especially in uh, uh, you know Scandinavian countries like Germany and uh, Sweden, Norway, if you are working in those countries, they have particular regulations that you only have to use electrical trucks trucks to distribute the products because you can you cannot emit CO, CO2, carbon dioxide in the environment to pollute the environment. So you have to look up into all these things to come up with a particular strategy that can help you to build a competitive advantage that can not only help you survive in the local market, but can also help you to export the products and services to the other countries all over the world. So this is Michael Porter's diamond. And uh, with that, I think uh, I have explained most of this, which is in the subsequent slides. And uh, you can just uh, study this on your own. Uh, you can also read this in the book. Uh, but one final thing which you 
as students of international management should understand. I think in macroeconomics course, you already have studied this, but I will revise it for you. Balance of payment. What are balance of payments in accounts? Uh, when a government actually look into the import and export of goods, they see that how many uh, dollars that we imported and how many dollars we actually exported. For example, if you export more and import less, you will have a positive balance of payment. But for a country like Pakistan, who imports more and export less, we have a negative balance of payment. And negative balance of payment means that you have to pay to the world. You are uh, on debt uh, as compared to the other countries all over the world. So your balance of payment actually shows that how much you import and how much you export. And then you have your current account. Current account, again, is in the term of currency or money or income and receipts that if you have more money in your current accounts, it's, it has a positive surplus. That means you're doing good, you're exporting more. But if it has a deficit, deficiency, it is in the deficit. That means you're not doing well. You have a lot of money to give to other people all over the world. Then you have the capital account, which records one-time charges in the stock of assets that actually tells you that how much uh, particular addition has happened to your overall country's assets or the multinational organization's assets. And then finally, you have the financial accounts that records your tra transactions, financial transactions of your purchases and sales. So on national accounting level, as well as on multinational companies level, you can see all of these things happening that these organizations, these entities, they can calculate what is their current account balance, what is their balance of payment, what is their capital account and how their financial accounting is working. So this was the chapter. If you have any question, you can ask. And then I will tell you what is the assignment related to this chapter. Dear students, nothing. No question. Everything understood. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, the assignment for this chapter is that you have to use this. Porter's diamond and you have to look into Google Scholar that which company has used it or you have to study the literature related to the Porter's diamond. So I will share a sh short brief in the group related to the assignment that what you have to do in the assignment but the resource that will be very helpful for this would be scholar.google.com. So I hope that things are clear regarding this chapter. Uh, now, I'm going to share the text of the chapter as well as the PowerPoints and I will share the assignment related to this chapter in the written form. And all three of them will also be available on your LMS. So if you don't find them in the group, you can go to LMS and you can simply download them. All right. Understood? Yes. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. See you in